surfing now, everybody's learning now, come on a safari with me. weekend in April, and the surfers, the strollers, sunbathers, spectators, the families, the lovers, come out in force to enjoy the warm sunshine at Jacksonville Beach. During the week, the birds outnumber the people. With temperatures in the comfortable 70s, there's no urgent need to flock to the beaches like there will be in July and August. You can stroll for miles along the uncluttered beaches and use the music of the surf to melt away the long winter. Ah, uh, for the life of a beachcomber. Shorebirds await the outgoing tide for the next gourmet meal. Surf fishermen can call the inshore waters for trout, blues, and whiting. This was the setting for our stay at Jacksonville Beach. The Atlantic Shores Motel, a small mom and pop motel, owned by the friendly people Jim and Gloria Hayes. That's it. Uh, do I pay that when I leave, or is that just taken off the credit card? No, we can. What if you pay with a credit card? We just add it to it when you leave. Or you can come in and pay for it. Doesn't make a difference. Uh, okay, I'll see you when I'm leaving, then. and if I don't, it'll be right on. It'll be right on the credit card. We'll put it on the credit okay. card, even, and we'll charge him too. By the way. <laughs> oh, I the, the, the weather kind of shitty. We're going to run up to the zoo. Well, it's supposed to be better uh, late this evening. Yeah. <laughs> That'll look good in the when zoo. I, when you go to the zoo, make sure you come back with her. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> yeah. Look, I said, stay tomorrow and I'll be leaving Thursday. I'll push my way uh, back. You got to do all the work this morning by yourself? Yes, sir. What happened to the maid? They're both in bed. They're what? They're sick? I don't know. I, I don't know. Sick or tired? <laughs> sick or tired. Yeah, that's right. You wore him out, huh? <laughs> okay, can I go in? <laughs> Small motels are gradually decreasing in number as large hotels and condos are erected in their place. It's the diehard surfers who give the most animation to the beach. There are at least six full-time surf shops in the area who cater strictly to the surfers. Most surfers wear wetsuits at this time of the year, 
as they try to protect their farm for the coming summer peak. The focal point of the beach is Jacksonville Pier, which runs a thousand feet into the ocean. It provides access to the many species of fish that swim in these shallow waters. There's a tackle shop on the pier with pictures of redfish, mackerel, cobia, sheep's head, sea trout, and barracuda, all caught off this pier. There are shops and restaurants on the pier, and it's a great place to have breakfast. Fishermen can rent equipment and buy bait for less than $5. For a nominal fee, bystanders can stroll on the pier and watch the fishermen try their luck. This retiree from New Jersey spends his morning on the pier trying to fill his cooler with fresh fish. It doesn't take him long to hook into something. The first fish of the day is a whiting, which are prized for their excellent eating quality. Fisherman's tackle consists of a heavy spinning rod and reel, 20 pound test line with a 4 ounce pyramid sinker. Two swivels hold two snelled one aught hooks. And both of these are baited with fresh shrimp. This week there has been a good run of whiting which satisfies most of the fishermen. Whiting are members of the kingfish family and are found in shallow, sandy areas where they feed on shrimp and small crustaceans. Another plentiful fish in April is the sailfin catfish, which run from one to four pounds. Catfish have sharp spines along their dorsal fins and pectoral fins that can give someone a nasty wound if they're not careful. The retiree from New Jersey handled the catfish spines very easily. First, he just whips him onto the pier. The retiree's cheap weapon is a pair of long nose pliers where he proceeds to neutralize the spines by breaking them off. Rendered helpless, it's easy to remove the hook from this catfish. Most catfish are freshwater fish, with only two species found in salt water, the hardhead catfish and the sailfin catfish. Catfish are considered a delicacy down south, and a fish fry there means catfish and hush puppies. But the pier is not exclusively a male domain. With the advent of woman's live, we have a fisherwoman.
This woman decided to take up the sport to show the chauvinists she could do just as well as them. Besides, she couldn't find a bikini big enough to fit her. The woman angler shows the correct technique for dispatching the beast. Using long nose pliers and a napkin to keep the slime off her hands, she easily removes the barbed hook from the creature's mouth. But somehow the line got wrapped around the fish. But she knows just what to do. And quickly dispatches him back into the water. Jacksonville Pier, Action Central. About a year ago, our son Jay emigrated to Jacksonville and now lives in Century 21 Apartments. This is where Jay lives. This is the view from his front porch. Jay has invited us for a hot dog roast to show us his apartment and meet his roommates. Nishi is from Winchester, Virginia and has volunteered to cook the hot dogs on Jay's new grill. Holly is from Malden, moved down here last August. She plans to enroll in Jacksonville University and study photography. I know when we get around to it. And put some in there and put some water in there. I got it again. I got to get a place, so. Well, that's why we have to do the he didn't bring it up. I bought some food with her. I don't get him. But he left it in the car. Jay's apartment comes complete with a health club and gym facility, which includes an in ground swimming pool. What do you got there, Nishi? Well, I got hot dogs and I got uh, hamburgers and I think they're on the stand. Did you cook them yourself? Uh, Is this the first time you've done it? Um, actually, second one. <laughs> so, not that bad. I got a little bit of food. I might eat. <laughs> Jay has volunteered to be our guide for the coming week as we tour Jacksonville and the surrounding area. Jacksonville is the northernmost city in Florida, and much of the surrounding area is still in its natural state. Our highway to discovery is the Buccaneer Trail, a portion of US A1A. This is a national scenic highway that runs along the Atlantic sea coast clear down to Miami. Our first stop, Hannah Park. Welcome to Jacksonville, Florida. This could be the very best park that we have down here. It's called Hannah Park. And what makes this park so unique is that on this side of the main road, we have a freshwater lake and we have a bunch of little ponds surrounded by exotic southern plants, very unique atmosphere. But if you cross the road on the other side is the Atlantic Ocean. So it's two for the price of one. You have on this side a totally different world than what is on the other side, but both are very nice. And I think this is one of the better places to start out while touring Jacksonville, right here at Hannah Park. 
welcome to. Jacksonville can be crowded in certain places, but at the park, it can be a wonderful nature. That's what I like about Hannah Park. Wonderful, sunny skies, very little rain, and low humidity too. A lot of people don't realize that. These are palmettos. They're the straight state plant of Georgia, but these are in Florida. What's a palmetto? It's a, it's a baby, it's a shrub type palm tree. Got behind me is some Spanish moss and it's, it's a kind of a parasite that grows on these trees. Uh, they, they, some of the natives down here even collect it. They use it for stuffing and packing and uh, making cushions and things. But here's a good example of some Spanish moss hanging from this tree behind me. This one's bigger than the last one. Probably can keep that, right? Yeah, There's no living on those. First week in April, back home it's 32 degrees, lake effect snow, and we're enjoying Jacksonville, Florida, 75 degrees and sun. Hannah Park in Jacksonville, what a super place to be in the first week in April. Located on the St. Johns River, 
Jacksonville is a major deep water seaport. The U.S. Navy is the largest employer in Jacksonville, and there's a huge naval base at the mouth of the St. John's at Mayport. Mayport is an artist's dream, a photographer's delight. This picturesque fishing village is home to a large commercial fleet that supplies the many seafood restaurants along the river. Mayport also has one of the largest shrimping fleets in North America, and they bring in over 100,000 tons of shrimp per season. It is also home port for a 48-foot charter fishing boat, the King Neptune. It can carry up to 75 people on an 8-hour deep sea fishing excursion. Colorful pelicans stake out a claim for each dock filing or other strategic spot along the waterfront. Like gargoyles, the silent sentinels eagerly await the return of the shrimpers and commercial fishermen. The gleanings from today's catch mean a feast for the pelicans with very little effort on their part. And we think owls are wise. This pelican tries to train a tourist how to use his wings to fly, but the tourist just can't get the hang of it. Mayport Harbor, only minutes away from the bustle of the big city. A must on any tour of Jacksonville. A unique link in the Buccaneer Trail is the John Rival Ferry, which operates at Mayport. For $2.50, one can sit back, relax, and let the rippermen take your car across the quarter of mile river. Every 30 minutes, the ferry transports up to 40 cars and trucks across the river. It is an integral part of U.S. Highway A1A. By using the ferry, one can save a 30-mile detour over the Danes Point Bridge. Along the northern shore of the St. John's runs Heckshire Drive with its many colorful fishing camps. Candy out in the fish camp. <laughs> I can fish right offshore here, right? Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> and how about bait and tackle? Can I have bait and tackle, I have bait and tackle shop. Can I, can I rent tackle or do I have to bring my own? You can buy your own. Or we have a boat to take you fishing. Oh, do you? Oh. Yeah. Heckshire Drive crosses the Intercoastal Waterway, a series of channels, rivers, estuaries, and barrier islands that forms a protective channel along the Atlantic Ocean. A small boat can travel from the Hudson River to the Everglades, protected from the stormy waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Leaving Highway A1A, we turn on the back road. 
Destination, Kingsley Plantation, the oldest plantation in Florida. With live oaks, Spanish moss, and dense vegetation along the road, it's a look backward into what the old Florida was like. In 1814, Florida was under Spanish rule. Zephaniah Kingsley moved to Fort George Island and established a plantation, growing corn, cotton, sugarcane, and citrus. The Spanish had liberal policies about race relations, and Kingsley married Anna Jai, a woman he had bought as a slave. Kingsley treated his six slaves very well and tried to keep a humane relationship with his workers. His policies were successful, and he amassed 32,000 acres, four plantations, and 600 slaves in northern Florida. But bad times were in the future. When the English bought Florida in 1821, they enacted oppressive slave laws, and conditions deteriorated for the black people. To escape what he called intolerance, Kingsley moved to Haiti in 1837 and established a colony for his family and former slaves. The plantation on Fort George Island was sold to a nephew. are the remains of the old slave quarters. Notice that the walls are made out of the conquina. The conquina is, uh, th this is what the soil at the rock here in Florida is made out of seashells, compressed seashells. When they first dig it up, it's very soft. They can mine it, and after it hits the air, it hardens, and it's like cement. And that's what they use for building materials here. This is Kingsley Plantation near, it's on Talbot Island near Jacksonville, Florida. I always said my husband wanted to make a sleigh out of me, and here he has me in the slave quarters at Kingsley Island. Kingsley Island? I'm not even sure where I am. You're in a slave house, that's where you are. Is this Kingsley Island, Ainsley Island? Here is where I cook. All the fabulous meals that he, I, he eats. And he is taking this picture inside my bedroom. This is the chimney. I build my fire here. We're inside one of these buildings made out of conquina stone. This is Kingsley Plantation on Talbot Island, near Jacksonville, Florida. A1A crosses several barrier islands, all part of the Timicon Nature Preserve. The state is trying to preserve as much of the area as possible in its natural state. The many islands and inlets along this coast were havens for pirates and buccaneers who preyed on the Spanish galleons, shipping gold back to Spain in the 1500s. Now shrimpers work the inlet and the fragile sand dunes are protected. The beach on Big Talbot Island is left in its primitive state. This is the same scene Ponte de Leon would have viewed when he first saw La Florida in 1513. This is a very unique place to go because of all the trees that are still on the beach. It looks like a different world almost. It doesn't look like your normal beach. You have all these dead trees scattered all about, but it gives it a very unique flavor. And that's one of the reasons this is one of my favorite beaches in the area right here.
That's a beautiful camera you got there. What are you photographing? Uh, what is the name of this place again? Well, I mean, what are, what are you, nature shots or uh, what? Yeah, yeah, just landscapes. Uh, talk by the name of Vansel Adams. Kind of trying to emulate him. He has a lot of uh, landscapes, mountains. I'm trying to get the high detail on these trees out here. There's big trees down there. Many famous photographers come down here and photograph this beach. I yeah. It, saw it in a book, so I figured I'd come down here and give it a shot. Yeah, the driftwood really looks nice. Definitely. At the northern end of the Buccaneer Trail is Fernandina Beach, an old community that was once an important commercial and political center in Florida. It is now being refurbished as a tourist attraction. You did it, you made TV. Now you're gonna be on channel 42. 42? We don't even get that channel. Early in the century, Henry Flagler, the man most responsible for developing tourism in Florida, began the Florida East Coast Railroad from Fernandina Beach. The eventual terminus was Key West. He built a series of fantastic hotels along the railroad, catering to the rich and socially prominent. The Grand Hotel in St. Augustine is now Flagler College. Bernadina Beach is the oldest resort town in Florida. Tourists can stroll through 50 blocks of homes and buildings listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Dops and restaurants line Center Street, and you can find anything from kites to antiques. Bernadina Beach on St. Amelia's Island, the north end of the Buccaneer Trail. At the south end of the Buccaneer Trail is St. Augustine, a major tourist destination in Florida. part of St. Augustine, the oldest city in North America. We're going to stroll down this street right through the heart of the old section of St. Augustine. and a half tourists a year visit St. Augustine and the old restored section is the center of their activity. Shops, restaurants, museums, shrines, galleries, cafes and quaint courtyards beckon to be discovered.
always tell an Irishman, but you can't tell a bunch. When you're Irish, it's hard to be humble. Exploring the side streets and back alleys, you can find unique visual treasures in quiet backyards. Small boutiques of artists and craftsmen are tucked into quiet courtyards. They're often missed by the mainstream visitors. Beautiful gardens and fountains lie hidden behind the coquina walls of the old Spanish Quarter. Just walking, it would be nice to sit and rest for a while. And there are plenty of places to accommodate us. So goodbye, he said to you, come and she's gone. We've been walking around town, doing a little sightseeing, exploring some of the shops. Now it's time to relax here for a minute. Nice, cold, or ice. Good old St. Augustine. Best place. The town is a magnet for characters. A great place to people watch. Colorful street musicians provide entertainment while the tourists rest their weary feet.
modern city of St. Augustine is a clean, beautiful town with a strong Moorish and Spanish architectural influence. The Plaza de la Constitución was laid out in 1598 and little has changed since. It was the central square around which the old business section was built and where the slave market was held. You can have an individual tour of the city in a horse-drawn carriage. Or you can ride the tourist trams, getting off and on at selected stops along the way. The best tour is by foot. This is the Bridge of Lions in St. Augustine, and here's our mascot right here, Leo the Lion. What we're going to do is take a little walk up on the bridge and try and feed a little catfish with some bread. Uh, they circulate underneath and the tourists come and they drop the bread in and the catfish devour it like sharks. So we're going to take a little walk up there right now and see if we can't uh, maybe even throw a little line in and catch a few. What do you think? St. Augustine was settled in 1565 to protect the Spanish sea routes. The number one world power at this time, Spain was firmly entrenched in South and Central America. Its main mission, to plunder gold and silver from the Native Americans and ship it back to Spain. Spanish galleons loaded with treasure from Mexico and Peru stopped at Havana, Cuba for supplies before sailing back to Spain. The ships rode the Gulf Stream along the Florida coast, then up the southeast coast of North America and across to Spain. The slow-moving galleons were easy prey for raiders and pirates so Spain wanted to control the coast. A military presence at St. Augustine would deter France and England from setting up bases to attack their treasure fleet. After destroying the French settlement at Fort Caroline, Spain controlled all of Florida. St. Augustine, rich in history, a modern, thriving city with a mild climate and a promising future. The crown jewel of the Buccaneer Trail. Downtown Jacksonville, a great place to hang out. Alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go. Jacksonville is a major cultural, financial, industrial, and transportation center. Located on the St. John's River, it has gone through great pains to protect and beautify its riverfront. The people of Jacksonville enjoy the outdoors and the arts. Many attractions are on or near the riverbank. The centerpiece of the waterfront is Jacksonville Landing, 
where it all comes together. Entertainment, dining, shopping, relaxing, or just strolling in the heart of the downtown area. Don't hang around and let your problems surround. Two miles of landscape walks and landings give an infinite number of views of this thriving metropolis. Both sides of the river are landscape, and you can walk across the bridge or take a water taxi from one shore to the other. is a favorite of the preppy crowd who enjoy the many restaurants and nightclubs. Jacksonville is a great place to live and an underrated place to visit. Say hi, y'all. Hi, y'all. We're well, in Florida here. Welcome. It's nice and hot and sunny. How's the snow out there? Hey, you know what they got? 30 degrees this week and 30 degrees next week. Oh. Say hello, Mama. Hi, Mama. Hi, sisters. This is my house. This is my couch, my table, <laughs> my fan. <laughs> I don't like being out of bed. I guess he must be. <laughs> I haven't seen the inside of his house either. So. Maybe he's living on the street corner or something. We don't know. I haven't seen this yeah, yeah, yet either. I haven't seen this yet. 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 Look, Angelina. Go ahead. Hi, Mom. We're going to show you all around our house since you both come to Florida and visit us. This is the entrance way to the house. You walk in, and the first room you go to is... Oh, it's Jessica's room. Here's Jessica and her Siamese triplets, Cassie and Tristan. This is where they plot all their little schemes. 
<laughs> we love her anyways. <laughs> Even though she's a teenager. <laughs> Next room. We close this door and try not to look in here if we can prevent it. Danger disaster area, yes. right? You usually have to walk like that. <laughs> you gotta put your feet up about four feet before you can get in the room. But we had her. Where up. is Angelina now? Angelina's spending the night with her friend Melissa. Oh. Okay, and this is our spacious kitchen. We try to do as little cooking as possible. <laughs> As you walk around the kitchen, you come to the dining area, which is kind of crowded right now. We have Aunt Dot here, and Uncle Mark. <laughs> hey, now I'm going running. <laughs> so here's Bo, but he's camera shy, so I don't know how long it's going to stay around. Sit down, Bo. Do some tricks. Sit. Sit. Sit, Bo. Bo, sit. Oh, so I didn't get shaped tonight. All right. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down, buddy. Lay down. Bo, don't run. Speak, Bo. Speak. Speak. I'm getting out of here. Speak, Bo. You look so proud. That's his son. Yeah, you don't have son. That's the only one I'm ever going to have. But they done. Clip me, so.